So, Brian and Rachel, uh, thank you very much for joining the Toast Talks podcast. Really excited to have you here. Thank you, Michael. Uh, we are uh, stalwarts now in, um, in Derry, so a lot of people would be very familiar with Enterprise Northwest. So, um, it's great to, to have you here. Um, the, the whole point of the podcast is to highlight the positive stories within the Northwest um, and basically bring kind of. Uh, a bit of the good news that you know people are very good at complaining or, or bringing out the negative things but it, i think it's really good to actually bring the positives that there are in the city because it's actually becoming quite you know there's quite a lot of positive things happening yep. at the moment which is which is really exciting um so for anybody that doesn't know you brian you're director of business development and enterprise yeah that's correct and Rachel, you're business consultant and digital digital lead digital lead yeah so uh and you're both enterprise northwest you're nearly part of the furniture well, I say that. I've, <laughs> I've, I've been there uh, a bit longer, so uh, just 15 years past there, and Rachel's been with the organisation probably two years just there past in, in August. So was kind of I've seen a lot of change in the organisation. I first joined it whenever we had just opened the Northwest uh, Business Complex in Skeg. So um, lots of developments over the last 15 years, like so, um, but lots of developments pro- pro- that we have in the uh, plan for the future as well. Nice, no, so lots of lots of things to be optimistic for. So, yeah. Yeah. we'll we'll kind of we'll we'll probably start at the early stuff and then and then progress through to the the kind of future and what yeah. what we hope for the for the northwest. So, you both grew up in Derry, all your lives, mm-hmm. uh, educated here. Didn't didn't go away to university either of you. No, both home birds. Uh, both home birds. Uh, well, I, I think when I when I was at St Columns, um, I think there was a group of us, and it just it was the course. Um, and I, I think now even we having children and they're moving uh, moving away, maybe thinking about going to university, kind of weighing up the pros and cons of kind of uh, going away to university or maybe staying uh, local. So I did uh, business studies at McGee University, had a great time, fell in with a great group of friends. Um, and then kind of moved on to uh, get a job in Dupont. Yep. Um. So it was kind of manufacturing. So it was absolutely probably nothing to do with me to read. <laughs> but then after ten years in Dupont, I decided I kind of wanted to do something different. I wanted kind of uh, a different challenge. So I then joined um, Northwest Marketing uh, as it was then, and uh, we rebranded probably about ten years ago to Enterprise Northwest. Um. So I, I have a, I have a, a son that's away to university. And uh, now he's just going did to go to, away. He, he's going to Belfast, so he's away. Oh, he's not too bad. He, he's he, not, too, he's far. not too bad. But um, I suppose with COVID and stuff like that, there for young people, just kind of that social experience. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that he's kind of gone. Like, but um, like as you know yourself, like there's lots of talk about the university and the lots of different um, uh, courses coming. Yeah. So it's great to uh, see you eventually. Uh, like I've seen it. Um, the first hand now you kind of the developments in Belfast and just the buzzing around the city centre so hopefully with an expanded McGee University you know the city uh, collectively and the region collectively will benefit because not only do they and students come and they bring their different skills and stuff there they locate here they spend yeah. money here so everybody small businesses big businesses uh, all benefit from that there so hopefully we can continue to grow McGee because yeah. having a university in the city is a key asset. Yeah, it's not just the university; it's what it brings with it, and then people stay and kind of you know create their lives here. And Absolutely, because you, even with university, you need a you need a kind of daytime economy, you need a nighttime economy. Yeah. And there, there, there's there's spend there yeah. that, that comes from that. So people just see maybe sometimes just the the head count of students, but then they need accommodation, they need fed, they need you know their social life isn't and stuff like that there. So. The whole economy, the whole local economy, would benefit with, with an expanded yeah. McGee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I th- and I think it's been a long time coming, but it's good to see that eventually that is uh, yeah. on the on the way. Yeah. Um, so you both attended McGee locally, the same as myself, actually. I um, well, funny story for me, I got <laughs> accepted on day John Moore's to do right, uh, okay. criminology. Uh, so we nearly lost you, Liverpool. Nearly lost me. <laughs> I completely freaked out. I'm such a homebird, and went to McGee, and I was unsure what to do at Mahi. I was going to do business studies and then uh, I was queuing up down to open day and I thought I'm going to go there have a wee nosy and then I went to the school of computing. Right okay. So I done my degree in IT and I ended up having my son in first year at uni. Okay. So when everybody was out of freshers week I was being a mommy. Okay. So I went through some challenges at uni mm-hmm. but do you know what the support at Mahi was amazing even the lectures the, like everything 
Um, so I just battered through it and um, got, there. got finished my degree in there. We took a year out and now looking back, I'm thinking, how did I do that? That must have been seriously tough. I, like Couldn't do it now, but I don't. <laughs> but that is one of the things, because you just you do what you have to do and mm-hmm. that's, you know, kind of... Uh, Supposed to be cross over into the business side. That's kind of what a lot of business owners have to do. They just kind of get on. Have to, yeah. you know, you do what needs done, and then you kind of look back five years and then go, "Geez, why did I do all that?" But yeah. that's just kind of the process. So much as well. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. No, I think that's uh, that's true. Um, so you you were saying there you you started in Dupont, get quite a big company with Andrea, and then you you actually started in Alchemy, was it? Mm-hmm. For, did you Alchemy first or then Montbet or what? Montbet and uh, then Alchemy. Uh, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then so two IT roles ish. I and two completely different roles. Um, <laughs> if anybody says to me, you know, you worked for an online booking set, uh, bookmakers, yeah. I'm like, Aye. and they're like, oh my god, I can't put you in that role. But it was amazing. See the things that I learnt and that role was unreal for every role then after it. Um, it was fast pace, it was a lot of pressure, but it was exciting too, and yeah. it was like on the go. But um, it was amazing just the, the, the skills that I picked up through it, and then moving on the alchemy too was amazing, the people I met and the skills I learnt. Yeah. Um, I was able to go on the client sites, um, working over in Wales and um, over in Newcastle on a few client projects and stuff. But um, then again, I'm a home bird too, so <laughs> back home again. But it prepared, it probably prepared you pretty well for Enterprise Northwest and mm-hmm. the and the kind of variety of things that you have to look at and things like that. So the experience kind of carries itself through. I, th- for I think uh, life kind of um, <laughs> prepares you for things. You no know, people like I have uh, sons at the minute are kind of getting jobs and have jobs and they're coming in and they're maybe complaining about you no know, a manager or different things, but. I suppose in any anything that you do you're always picking up transferable skills yeah. that yeah. you can bring into your I suppose your personal life your kind of your family life and I suppose your work yeah um, so I think when Rachel joined joined the company she had probably 10 years experience at working uh, um, out there in the real world and I was the, the same so mm-hmm. we, we have kind of skills and knowledge that we're able to maybe bring to yeah. our clients as well and we also try to encourage our advisors and our consultants as well to be knowledgeable about the local area you know get involved in different things know what's happening because again when somebody comes in over our door we need to kind of advise them as best we can and maybe there's stuff that we know about this maybe coming yeah. up that might be an opportunity or might be a threat uh, or something that they maybe have to navigate around um, so th- that that real life experience is mm-hmm. is brilliant for Invaluable. for an employer. Mm. You no, know, getting that um, getting that person, but getting that range of skills is really yeah. really powerful. Oh, mm. I would I can I can imagine. And then you know, like you said, knowing what's going on in the local area is very important as yeah. well. Because yeah. you know, somebody comes with something, you can kind of go, hey, hold on a second, but yeah, there's such and such there. That's yeah, you know, and that's so that's it. And I suppose sometimes when somebody comes on with maybe an idea or maybe an existing business. No, they've maybe thought that they've thought everything out and maybe yeah. kind of done the research and maybe kind of again through maybe our, our networks and contacts and stuff there we maybe know something and maybe we just kind of I suppose uh, either let them know or maybe kind of kind of uh, direct them or maybe they find out that uh, themselves like so that's something that we try to prepare as best as possible yeah. for either a new business or maybe a, a business that's grown just preparing them so because there's lots of bumps in the road and trying to just plan and prepare for that as best as possible yeah oh definitely that's that, that that's one of the things that I'm, i kind of want to focus on is the how the the bumps in the road are, are handled um but so luckily for for the northwest and um uh, you know enterprise northwest um we managed to retain you in Derry. so uh i think you've you've been here for for quite a while um like you're saying 15 years and just over two am i wrong did you start at covid then i did yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. I remember coming on and I think did I wear my mask coming on? I think it was in the height of COVID, March. And there's been lots of talk about even on, on the summer, onboarding new staff during COVID because yeah. you want the new staff to get involved in the organisation. They meet people face to face, they find out and just kind of get used to the culture of the organisation. Yeah, yeah. And yes, it was a challenge, like, but I think we we kind of. Um, we overcame it kind of well and there was lots of client interaction online there so uh, during that period so we were able to you know, I suppose even the business activity was able to continue and 
Rachel kind of embraced that uh, right from the start. Y- you weren't far off the recession either when you started. We, we actually opened our our <laughs> business park when I, we opened our business park. Um, the recession, the first recession, uh, happened two thousand and um, seven. Um, so we had just opened a fifty five thousand square foot business complex. We had borrowed over a million pound uh, from the bank. Um, we had a, quite a few construction companies, and then obviously the recession had uh, really affected construction companies in the housing market. Um, but I think it probably prepared us, and it probably yeah. shaped us to be more innovative and more agile uh, going forward. Because yes, we had large construction companies as tenants in our business accommodation, but when they moved out, we replaced them with small, medium-sized local businesses, indigenous businesses. There, that it's less risk for us, but it's probably really and truly, it's probably what we should have been doing from the start. Yeah. And, but from that point in time, that's what we are now. Like we have over 100 businesses in our two young business incubators. We don't really uh, go after big tenants and big yeah. clients. Yeah. So we're kind of that small to medium size because we're an enterprise park yeah. focusing on indigenous businesses. Yes, we have some FDA. Yes, we have um, quite a few social enterprises as tenants. Um, so the recession prepared us for, for a, uh, it was a severe bump in the road, yeah. but we, we were able to get come through that um, uh, quite well. And it's just about careful management and just planning for the future and having the right people around the table to discuss all maybe the permutations that might come. So yes, it was a <laughs> it was a real worry back then, but in hindsight, it probably was the best thing. It, it, it prepared us really well, yeah. and we're kind of um, a lot more resilient now in terms of any bumps coming that COVID has brought, and as well as probably what they're talking about maybe is coming maybe in the next yeah. twelve to eighteen months. So. Um, all we can do is plan as best as possible. And, and well, it's a really good thing in the sense that, you know, like people go, ah, oh, you know, the timing, the timing, the timing. You're kind of going, well, isn't, sometimes the timing actually brings the best, you know, the recession and yeah. that forced you to kind of think differently, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. about what it was and then what it has become is probably mm-hmm. uh, an even better part of what, what it maybe would have been. And, that's and I also think um, there's significant challenges out there in terms of the funding environment. Yeah. Be either for private businesses or for social economies or for community voluntary sector organisations. Um, but sometimes, and maybe we've seen instances as up in the past, where uh, maybe funding has been removed for private organisations as well as the third sector and uh, social economy businesses. But sometimes funding can um, stifle innovation. Sometimes yeah. whenever people yeah. ha- are thinking of, maybe they know what the challenges are and they need know that what maybe income they have to bring in and, and turnover, that they're, they're, they're a bit more innovative yeah. uh, and they're thinking on their feet and that it's continuous and continuous. No. So sometimes that challenge and that difficulty can bring maybe opportunities yeah. as well. Yeah, because if they don't have to change the funds there and you know yeah. it's, it's easy, it's easy, everything's grand, it's yeah. going fine. But then that, as you say, that force of change, right? Yeah. We need to actually change Absolutely. what we're doing. Yeah. So it forces them to be a bit more innovative, like you're saying. So it's not, not all bad. No, and uh, COVID you know. is probably as well, uh, Michael, as you, you would know, um, COVID brought significant challenges for yeah. um, all uh, walks of life. But lots of businesses maybe streamlined their operations. Maybe they were maybe kind of they, they had they just possibly to survive, and coming out of COVID now maybe that business model that they they took they they had they adapt to yeah. is maybe their model going forward now. So yes, it's brought significant challenges, but for some businesses it it just was allowed it it it, it forced them to streamline yeah. the business, and that's maybe how they'll they'll take it forward now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You like you said, you'd never have thought that businesses would be able to adapt that quickly you know yeah. that much change that quickly yeah. but you know obviously some maybe didn't yeah. make it but you know by and large it wasn't maybe as bad with furlough and things the other yeah. supports that were put in but but definitely you know there's some businesses that come out the other side and they're they're much probably stronger yeah. from yeah. it yeah. Um, we which, that too. yeah and but, but it's it's funny like if somebody had said that to you beforehand they're like right you know there's going to be a huge time where people will work from home for a period of you know whatever six twelve months whatever they did you kind of go you know like, that's never going to happen I mean, what would what would bring that about you know and now it's like you know and from there's there's also personal benefits which will we'll kind of come on to is commercial versus 
kind of some other kind of benefits but yeah. like from a family side there's a lot of of people kind of are now benefiting from the flexibility that mm-hmm. there is yeah they can maybe work their hours and do their you know start a business and run it mm-hmm. but also have time with their families and yeah. things like that so it, it's it's good in that sense i think lots of people i suppose we've we've watched the news and we've watched different programs and we've talked to different people lots of people have reevaluated. yeah you know, and uh they were saying about I, w- I was watching something uh two evenings ago in the news about or maybe it was last night about the uk uh unemployment rate is the lowest it's ever been but there's numerous reasons for that you no know, some mm. people have left the labor market yeah. they've just retired you no know, they've just kind of or they've gone el- elsewhere um so People have reevaluated it. Maybe kind of, do they want to be a number in an organisation? Do they want to be that yeah. cog in the wheel that's maybe just another number or just a body? And I suppose they've just gone different ways. Some people have followed a passion, yeah. and maybe they've wanted to do that. Some people have just left a particular sector because it's maybe it's just maybe too salesy or it's maybe just continuous, continuous, and they want to do something that they've an interest in or a hobby and stuff there. So we know lots of people like yeah. that. So for us, it also has brought brought the, the, um, a lot of people maybe inquiry stage as well yeah. of just a business that they maybe want to do something maybe as a side hustle, yeah, um, part time of doing something that they enjoy because we always a joke. No, people don't start a business in something that they don't enjoy. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure there's many people that woke up in the city today and are going to a workplace maybe that they don't enjoy. Mm. But I suppose it pays the bills, and we've all been in that situation where we've gone to somewhere they pay the bills. So people, when they're coming to us, they're generally coming to do something and explore something, develop yeah. something that they have a real passion for. It, they have a real interest in. Um, so it's always, um, it's always, it's always positive. Yeah. Um, but I think we COVID that sh- real shock to the system um, has just everybody has kind of had a we think right. some people have gone full left field. Other yeah. people have tweaked maybe what they what they do or what they don't do. Um, so it's it's just society in general yeah. i think has uh, i've noticed it kind of uh, increase i was very heavily involved in the gopher program through when COVID hit when yeah. i first joined and i noticed a lot of people doing startup businesses you know like a lot of crafters and stuff through their home yeah um through COVID, and now they've carried through on our other programs the business innovation growth program yeah and now a lot of them have left their full-time jobs and they're doing amazing um some of them have even set up shops and stuff like that so they watch them start yeah. on the gopher program from their like kitchen table yeah uh, a lot of them and now you see them have their own shop their own premises possibly extend them to a second one um online everything and doing amazing is great to see it is really rewarding just just on that so like if we kind of touch it because maybe some people actually aren't aware of what enterprise northwest do so like you said there's there's, there's the startup assistance and mm-hmm. so, so do you want to just give a bit of paint kind of background because you do really start it from that which is somebody sitting at their table with an idea yeah. or maybe talking to their partner or whatever and saying do you know what i'd really like to do this right the way through to yeah. you know like you're saying some of the medium-sized businesses do you just want to give me a but on, uh, on kind well, of when I the phases, started, let's say. I joked and says the gopher program is the, the startup program. That's the where you come in and you have an idea and you get your business plan and financial projections. But I always call that one, it's like Dragon's Den. So you sit down with a client and they come in yep. and you don't know what their business idea is until they tell you. So it's, it is an exciting program, mm-hmm. um, but it also can be, it can be not boring, but it's very like factual like for, for the client because you get your business plan and the financial projections. And mentoring support too but it is great, amazing too for the client because i learned this when i was on that uh, program that stands as a formal document so a lot of landlords in the town now ask for that for um oh, really? secure premises you know stuff like that so and also it's great for them to look back and see where they've come you know what yeah. when, when their business progresses too um but yeah. the, the the hope is just to be basically kind of test the idea make sure yeah. it's kind of yeah viable maybe kind of have you thought about this have you thought about that so it's it's not it's essentially a sense check on the business making sure it all stacks up have you thought of everything and it's all free yeah it's all free and plus we say if you need an accountant on that program um if you need uh business insurance which a lot of people come in and you just see when they come in uh, they're so excited i got this <laughs> idea and then you kind of take the wee excitement away for a second just because you're getting a wee bit of reality yeah have you got insurance have you got an accountant if needed yeah. Um, have you got this have you got that so they are very grateful for the help too because they're like oh my god i didn't realize i needed all this 
Um, so you're putting the security behind their business yeah. too. Although they have this exciting idea, they also need the legal terms, the security and stuff like that. So it's, it's a probably the program we're be, we're best known for. Mm. We deliver that in partnership with our, our local council. So the Gopher program, it is a high profile. Uh, it is well marketed across Northern Ireland, and it's seen as the core startup program for yeah. people that have a business in uh, Northern Ireland. Um, but I suppose that we always have a mantra in terms of explore, start, grow. And we, we, in terms of that exploring idea, we run um, a pre-enterprise program called Exploring Enterprise, and we deliver that in partnership with uh, Enterprise Northern Ireland. And then we have our Gopher program, which is for when you get to that startup stage where you're yeah. almost ready to start. And then that growth stage, we also deliver um, a growth program called the Business Innovation and Growth Program for those uh, early stage businesses. We run that again in partnership with uh, organizations and our, our, our local council. So we're trying to take people from that explorer to the start to the growth stage. Yeah, That's, I suppose, one of the reasons why we probably 20 years ago, we hatched a, a, an idea that we needed business incubation, not only for sustainability for our organization, but also we had lots and lots of clients that were going to no needed space as such yeah um and we offer industrial space but also office space but it's in short-term leases because we understand somebody maybe that move out of their garage yeah. or the, their back office is a big risk so we want that they reduce that risk so it's easy in easy out terms um we we offer that managed space but basically that's the range of services that we would offer explore start grow um as an organization, we're a non-profit organization. We're yep. going 35 years next year. Um, but we also have a real, because we're based in, 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 in Derry City and we cover generally the Northwest with some of our services as well, we have a real social mandate as well. Yeah. And that's something our board are really uh, bought into. So we also deliver uh, support services to social enterprises yep. uh, across the Northwest. Uh, we've delivered them for uh, Invest NA, we deliver them for the Executive Office, we currently deliver them for um, Dairy City and Strand District Council. So we are involved in local community organisations that are maybe exploring maybe more sustainable yeah. operations and stuff like that there. And then we have ad hoc programmes that maybe we, for example, last year we, we, we had a youth entrepreneurship programme to targeting young people. We had a female entrepreneurship program targeting <laughs> female <laughs> entrepreneurs. We had a student entrepreneurship program because those are some of the things that in terms of entrepreneurship, they're saying there's a real lack of yeah. um, uh, numbers yeah. uh, in terms of female entrepreneurs, youth entrepreneurs, and maybe entrepreneurs from maybe ethnic minorities. So when, when we spot, a, um, I suppose, a, a gap. Like underserved. Are, yes, kind of yeah. underserved. We try to uh, address that with the, the, the team that we have. And we also have a... A bank of local associates uh, that we would use for maybe deliver those programs because we try to cover everything from that explore to that yeah. growth stage and also like it depends with what yes. is needed in particular <laughs> yeah. circumstances and not everybody will be the same also like entrepreneurship and that enterprise uh, sector there's lots of organizations across the north and across the northwest and across there in span that are there that are in that space so Again, uh, the advisors, we try to encourage everybody to know exactly who offers what. So we do a lot of stuff with the Food Innovation Centre and the North Earth Regional College. We try to signpost people to different organisations that maybe can provide services maybe that maybe we, we haven't. No, like the Food Innovation is a good example. Yeah. And then connect them all with also like if it's an accountant, if it's a insurance, if it's some, some legality, no, stuff like that there. So we try to kind of come in because like for example I had a client or just someone <coughs> rung the office there two weeks ago they've took on premises in the city centre they're in the middle of ripping the, the premises out they've, they've fitted out so they've signed a lease of two years this was the first interaction that they had made with us in terms of a phone call they saw, saw us on our social media and I, I asked kind of what stage they were at and I asked maybe their experience of kind of Sterma and the client says we have absolutely we've never run a business before we know nothing so I would have rather got that client maybe three months in yeah, advance. But you know what? At least now we're able to kind of advise the client in terms of they had done no financial projections. They had done absolutely nothing. They plan it. They don't know. They didn't know how to register. They didn't know about accounting. What were what their their yeah. um, requirements were? 
So at least they found us at this stage, but I would rather find them maybe three months in advance. But 100%. so there, there's lots of things when people come in. Sometimes people are very experienced. They've maybe done something before. Sometimes people come in and they've done never. They've just been an employee all their lives and their career. So we're able to kind of uh, provide them with that stepping stone. And it, it like I suppose the whole the whole point is that, like you're saying it. Being an entrepreneur or a business owner is probably not the easiest path at the best mm. of times anyway. There's always going to be ups and downs in it. So it's just to kind of make those yeah. a, bit, it's a bit less roller coastery yeah, and a bit easier. more kind of, yeah. <laughs> you know, like you'll, you'll never, I suppose, be able to take all the bumps out of the road. Yeah. But it's just to try and make it a bit, a bit smoother and kind of like you're saying, just, you know, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? You know, if you're in the food industry, you might need this. You know, yeah. you, do you know you need to get, mm-hmm. uh, you know, mm-hmm. sign off from this agency and stuff like that? So, I just like honestly, whenever I kind of found out the the range of services that Enterprise Northwest, I, I thought it was unbelievable, and especially for for you know for free, you know, yeah. it's just basically as you say, you know, kind of there to to help, depend on you know whatever stage a particular yeah. business is at. But it, I think it's invaluable for the city, and it's really really necessary. But just to go back to the COVID stage, have you noticed kind of? Um, an uptake, like you were saying, as people reevaluated things, and have you have you seen a, a, a bit more of a an uptake in the in the kind of explorer startup phase where people are kind of going, do you know what? Actually, that side hustle that I had, mm-hmm. actually, do you know, I could maybe, you know, leave my job and and do that. Have you seen an uptake in that over the last while? I have. Um, like I would have a more than a handful of clients that have like I've watched them. That we've had. We used to have a program as well. It was in between our go for it and our business innovation goals program so they would have been on that too so i've have clients that i've met on the the startup program and carried right through and watched them transition from their their business where they were from home and now they're they're, they're online they're kind of winning awards they're, they're collaborating they have kind of they're rubbing shoulders with some local celebrities and things like that you know so <laughs> it is great to see um i have some clients that took on um a small premises um, maybe this time last year, then they, a few months later, then they kind of extended in and did a bigger one. And now at the minute, then they're going on the even bigger one again. So it's just kind of, they keep coming back and it's like, this is amazing because you do help them as much as you can. So you always have that kind of relationship too, that they trust you. Yeah. They come back for a bit of advice. Um, they pop up, it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> kind of come down for a wee chat. Uh, you'll never know what, you never know what they're going to come down and say, but it is amazing to watch but no i do have a good load of clients that are progressing um some more rapidly than a, a lot of others like but it's great to see but it must be it must be hugely rewarding to see somebody that you know like you're saying you you come ex- the explorer stage yeah. and then you see them kind of progress through mm-hmm. and then you know maybe that's kind of different premises taking on employees you know mm-hmm. going through that thing it must be like really uh, <laughs> Rewarded. It, it is, and I, I, I suppose when when Rachel first joined the team, uh, I, I suppose she had worked in IT roles and maybe I came in the bank and stuff there. And uh, I suppose I had worked 10 years in the private sector and um, joined the organisation and I suppose just fell into a role. And one of my, one of my kind of key roles would be about supporting social enterprises. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I suppose, uh, maybe it's a personality thing, maybe it's empathy, well, I, ha- I have with the local community as well, but working with some of those organisations that work on the ground with people in certain demographics, maybe certain challenging uh, environments and stuff there, you know, I see the great work that they do. So if I'm able to help them a, a little bit, it makes my day and week really enjoyable. And at, at, oh, at City Rachel and um, some of the other uh, team that joined COVID, you know, you're, you're able to go out the door in the evening time and know you've made a small difference to somebody's business mm. and ultimately life. And people are really, really, like, I always see Derry as a, as a big town rather than a small uh, small city. You no, know, because we all, we're really sociable, we're really personable, you know, and, People are really appreciative. Clients are really appreciative. Obviously, yeah. we are only a small yeah. part of that because we are able to provide them with some of the advice and guidance and maybe steer them. They have their skills and their knowledge and their expertise and their passion um, for their, their idea. So a lot of it is down to them. But if we're able to smell it, play a, a small part in it, it is really uh, rewarding. So I know for me, we're being in the organization 15 years, no, I love going to my work every yeah. day absolutely love it and i'm a very privileged position to be able to say that 
hopefully the rest of the team feel that way and the longer they're there the more clients that you're you're working with the more benefits and progressions that you see um so it, it is very very rewarding and people are really really appreciative but it's kind of the same as the university thing as well you know although there's you're helping the, the business owner and stuff like that then you know as they take on employees you know that's people and families and jobs and, yeah. and money into the economy and yeah. and so the multiplier effect from it really and i think also um sometimes people don't see this because like we yes we're we're focused on that small medium-sized business we're we're not because some of some of our uh, initiatives are up the line they're fun to be invest in a and the rdf and different organizations so ultimately they want us to progress clients through that maybe meet invest in a clients status and scale and can, can go on and employ more people and export and blah 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 but also like the importance of local medium-sized businesses indigenous business is so so important because rachel mentioned some of her clients some of her clients are took on premises yeah they're employing staff which is a multiplier effect of those staff shopping in their local shops and their local convenience stores but also also they're taking on uh, premises so they're paying rates mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that those rates go on their city council those are spent on services that the city council provide yeah. so yeah. that that some people see that hairdresser or that gym or different and they don't think it's as, as valuable as maybe another business mm-hmm. but i see it nearly as more valuable because they're paying rates on that space yeah um and they're maybe employing local people even for some social enterprises that are based in the city like they maybe would maybe provide volunteer opportunities maybe employment opportunities that maybe a private sector employer might not because maybe they don't have that that those qualifications yeah. or those at that that level of experience so they maybe take a punt yeah. on, on, on a person because they, they know they will be able to mold them under that employee that know a really good employee um so that small medium-sized business locally you know, that's what i'm uh it makes me tick yeah uh, and that's what i'm interested in. and there's a real um feel good factor whenever you're able to provide a bit of support along the way yeah uh, and just kind of navigate them through and, and yeah. kind of see them brian's right it is very rewarding and i have noticed now like you always want to do things that are different and do things on the town and recently i've been helping a lot of businesses and clients collaborate yeah put them together and it's paying off amazing so it is um like just putting them together and some people think your ideas are absolutely crazy rachel like i put <laughs> one of my clients had a swimwear range and done a photo shoot and a hairdresser's and they, i was like just trust me in this idea but the photos were amazing and it worked out really well so now we have that thing where people pick up the phone and ring us and ask for our ideas and ask for our opinions and trust us and say do you recommend somebody that would work well for this so we get that all the time too but at the minute, I have loads of businesses that are working well together. Um, like you wouldn't even put them together, but it's mm. like it's great. That's just that's an unbelievable. Like that, even it's to that level, mm-hmm. you know, of of kind of do you know what would work really really well. Like that's, you know, there must be such a different range of of kind of a different advice that you give over time. You know, it's just really depends on what they need. So uh-huh. it's it's yeah. Geez, that's that's great. <laughs> that's great. Um, so I think, um just one of the things before we'll, we'll come on to social enterprises more yeah. because i do want to kind of talk a, a good bit more about those but um is there something in particular that people kind of hugely underestimate when they come on the, you know the, you, you kind of see it again you're kind of like there's another person who hasn't kind of thought of that is there one thing in particular or is it just kind of it varies to depend on the person um for me, it would be the normality of, of t- running a business, especially as maybe a, a self-employed person, because it's all-encompassing. Yeah. Um, because they have to think about delivering the service or making the product. They have to think about marketing. Mm. They have to think about the financing of it or, or, and uh, managing the finances. You know, the, the day-to-day stuff, kind of action planning, the day-to-day problem solving and kind of that type of thing. It just becomes all-encompassing. No, so we we have lots of clients that maybe we say to listen you got to work smarter yeah no so that's maybe where see if it's finance you need to get yourself a good no because yeah. we have clients some clients come on and maybe they say oh I, I hate finance and then other people say well i'm not really good at marketing <laughs> no if you're not good at something no, yes you can learn it and you can plot along yeah. 
But maybe see in terms of the finance type of things, no, we connect them with maybe a way an accountant yeah. or a kind of um, a bookkeeper or whatever kind of that suits their, their their needs. It's the same with the marketing. If they're not good with technology or social media stuff, maybe there's something else about it, and they just focus on providing that service. And yeah. you no, know, even the administration that we've seen a real growth now is basically not not so much because of COVID, but kind of it's grew uh, during COVID. Even that back office administration where yeah. they're able to pay somebody, you no. Know, a day a week or a day a month or so there. So I have lots of clients that all they basically do is provide their service. Somebody looks after their administration, somebody looks after their marketing, somebody looks after the finance and they're able to do the stuff that they're really good at and work smarter. Yeah. So sometimes in the very early stages, it can take a bit of time to get, get to that level where you're able to pay those yeah, uh, yeah, people, yeah, yeah. Mm. but uh, it can take a, a, a lot of time and probably what we try to do in terms of the go for program anyway is setting the person down to maybe think, map out the financial projections because people will maybe max something out on the back of a um, back of a, a page and maybe uh, the idea and the marketing and what they're going to do but when it comes down to the nitty-gritty of the finances that's where they maybe they have to kind of take a seat and see exactly right what's my sales assumptions what do i need yeah. what's my personal survival budget or what do i need to pay my bills and then you know what level of uh, sales they need to be able to cover that plus take a profit from no so there's wee things in terms it's of that 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 but we find that people you know they go all right does it these are the finances of the business and you know so 12 months not going to be yeah. any profit yeah. and thinking right but how are you going to survive for that yeah. 12 months you need to kind of factor yeah. that and it's not just about starting the business yeah. you need to be able to pay your bills your mm -hmm. mortgage but like everybody has responsibilities yeah. or commitments that they have to do so mm -hmm. Kind of find that that's about. I'm a bit like you too, I, Brian. I find that with my clients, but I also, a lot of my clients come through and they have like because we're on the business innovation goals program, they already have some already have existing websites and things like that, but a lot of them don't have anything to cover themselves, like terms and conditions. So I yeah. like almost have like anxiety looking at them and like, you've nothing covered. Have you got your products tested? Uh, you're selling online at the minute. You've no terms in place. Um, if you put a discount code up, you've, you're not just selling to your local people here in, in Derry, you're selling UK internationally, so you need something that's going to cover yourself. And that actually shocks me at the minute. There is a lot of businesses in our town that have websites, have this and that, that don't have themselves covered. So that's something that needs to kind of be more taught or yeah. people need to be more aware of that kind of the more important stuff. I know it's quite boring to a lot of people, but it's really, really needed. And just from the rules that I've worked on before, I've seen how much it's needed and the consequences if it's not set in place. So when you do kind of advise people on this, they're like, oh my God, I don't know about this. This is great. And some of my clients have actually said, I can now sleep at night because you put this in place. <laughs> I've actually had that said to me. So that's that's also rewarding, even yeah. though it's about kind of more of the boring stuff. But yeah, it's, it is but it's, it's, as you say, it's it's so important, especially, so important. and it's something maybe they don't think of is that they come on and there are the, all the ideas, all the things, yeah. you know, all the all the stuff yeah. that they really like and they're passionate about, and then they're kind of like, oh, I'll just leave that leave terms of condition. And, and also during COVID, pe people pivoted their businesses, and maybe somebody that was selling a product in a physical store maybe started selling online, and then there's terms and conditions and all those things that come with that. But I also think uh, COVID as well, I suppose we all had, a lot of us had more time. So we were kind of threw ourselves into maybe learning stuff that maybe we hadn't, people took up hobbies, people took up uh, different things. Lots of our businesses pivoted online that were selling online, be it a delivery service or maybe an e-commerce website and stuff there. And I've had, I have, have had businesses where they would have never went there, would have yeah. never went there in a million years except COVID forced them to go there. Mm -hmm. And then once they're there, they realize they go, oh my God, this like, isn't as hard as I probably thought. No, I maybe aren't IT savvy, but this software or this platform that I use is more or less mm -hmm. self-explanatory. I don't need to know code. I yeah. just need to know where I put the yeah. things. And maybe now that's generating maybe 10% or 20% of the overall sales. And they think, well, God, that's something. If I put a bit more time and effort on the, I, we, I've had a couple of clients that have had physical premises and have moved completely online now. Yeah. No, yes, that's reducing our, our rates for our local council, but at the same time, it suits their personal mm -hmm. their personal uh, needs and stuff like that there. So like it's see when we see some of those things, like I still am very surprised sometimes when I see I've I had a client who um 
I'll not say the exact the exact product, but uh, it has a laser printer, mm -hmm. and he bought it for a hundred pound, and he does it from his back bedroom, and he is now in six figures of turnover, you no know, within nine months of doing it, and this is just a hobby that that he that he does. So I still kind of I had to you know take a, a kind of gulp <laughs> when he told me, and I just thought it was incredible. No, mm. I call it now the hundred pound startup uh, <laughs> that I that that generate and, and I use it maybe to inspire. I do a lot whenever we do stuff in terms of students and in terms of kind of young people. I'm saying, listen, no, you could go online tonight. You could buy this here, and if this is just the hobby that is an interesting, and he was able to find that niche, yeah, mm. and he sells all around the world, I've, uh, no, Eastern Europe, Australia, America, all those things. A plat a website that he did himself. But no, um, um, and it's just it's just still blows Thank my you. mind when you see things like that. Um, so like people have definitely they have to think about new things and they're always continuously learning. But there's there's definitely opportunities that uh, that that could be, could be are out there. But you say like the markets just it's not no longer you know kind of yeah. there the northwest. It's yeah. now like it's so open now. And uh, it depends like where uh, we we always tell people it's like and uh, like. Business is about your target market. If your target market's not here, then you need to go to your target market. Yeah. Exactly. For example, I have a client yeah. at the moment that makes guitars, sells a lot in the uh, central USA. <laughs> no, so that's where he's going, kind of that blues, yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, bluegrass and stuff like that there. That's his target market. Mm -hmm. So he sells a lot. He's shown me where they're, they're all bought. These guitars are significantly priced. So mm -hmm. you might have to sell maybe 20 guitars and the America for his annual turnover. So if the market's not here, then you need to go where the market yeah. is. And online, like especially during COVID, online has just become far more accessible for Joe Public to be able to, like, and I'm I'm talking about me being Joe Public as well. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not a coder, um, but I know now that I could do the A, B, C, D, E, and F. If I had an online business, I know that um, I, I could do that. So. It's not as business. not as out of reach as you might not think. Not as daunting, mm -hmm. and yeah. so see for the, that person that's running their business, it's definitely not as daunting, and they can definitely reach more markets. Yeah, yeah. No, it it, it, it really is opening everything up. Now it does bring additional competition, but you know, yeah. I suppose it's you know you have to. There's always going to be competition. Yeah. And that's what what makes it go. Um, what would what would your advice be to? To anybody starting out in the entrepreneurial journey, we've kind of touched on it, but is it is it just basically kind of you know seek assistance or you know try and not do it in your own? Because there's a lot of people you know these things on Instagram that you see where they're just like just jump in, just go for it, and and you're kind of going, yeah, that's fine if you don't that's have any fine. responsibilities, but you you know you, I know that there are people is like just go for it, but I would my advice would be ask questions um, and get the help. Yeah. Like I'm a person, I ask questions about questions. <laughs> it's Brian, it's a class in me. But um He's not saying no, I don't know. He's not saying no, I'm not going to day. But um ask questions because if anything you're unsure of, don't don't be afraid to reach out, do the research, come and see us, come and see anybody that you can think of, like an accountant, um, an insurance broker, um, before even if you're thinking of it, but if you're still on a full time role Go and get help first. Um, seek advice. Uh, that's what I would do. Don't Tip be just it. leaving your job and going. Don't oh, don't, don't dive on this. <laughs> such step or two one. Um, don't dive on this. Definitely not. Um, but like you say, you can start it as a side hustle, long yeah. time, run alongside, see yeah. how it goes, and, and come, do come that. on the go for a program. See how your business plan and your financial projections is going to work out. That'll give you a good idea to see how the business could do year one, year two. Um, that's why it's always good to have that in place to, sh to show people down in black and white yeah. here's how it's going to go but um, definitely don't dive in just dip your toe in just dip it in <laughs> gently uh, reach, in uh, reach, reach out for uh, advice and support and I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's just us but we're able to maybe sign post but there's lots of other support organisations yeah. out there uh, in the city and they all have their, 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 their different niches um, but as I say just planning it out in advance and as you, as you uh, rightly said not jumping in but people that need to understand as well, you can be employed and self-employed at the same time. Yeah. No, and we would nearly sometimes people come in and then they maybe reduce their hours and maybe kind of their their brand is developed and maybe they have maybe a certain level of income already, so they know they can step back uh, even further. That's the ideal scenario. Um, 
So just reaching out, getting that support early stages so yeah. that you can plan. Because we like uh, reach to some uh, clients and maybe they're looking to go on the premises and we're able to kind of just preempt some questions and maybe ask those questions so that they don't go on it and maybe kind of then there's a problem. They're so we, it, we've yeah. seen it all. We've seen yeah. every um, every problem on, under the sun. So we're trying to just kind of preempt them uh, so that they can prepare for that and maybe that maybe that um, won't happen then. So just reaching out early for, for that support and advice and maximizing any free advice, any yeah. free grants, yeah. any free opportunities out there, just maximize because yes, there are, there can be sometimes financial assistance out there for different types of business. So sometimes it can be rural, sometimes it can be targeted at youth, sometimes it'll be targeted at female, sometimes it can be generic, just based on the stage. It tends to be very ad hoc at the at the moment, but reaching out because you may reach out to somebody and there may be a, a grant that's opened at that moment in time and we're able to same post you to that or maybe support yeah, you with the application yeah. that. So maximizing opportunities and Rachel already, already mentioned maybe some awards maybe clients have gone for. No, those awards sometimes come with financial contributions maybe at yeah. their stage of business. So again, just seeing what opportunities is out there and maximizing as much as possible. Yeah. Sometimes it's not out there, sometimes it is out there. So it's just kind of getting advice and any financial assistance that you can get at that stage. I think one of the things just as you say, like people are potentially reluctant to do it and it was actually somebody it was actually one of your clients said it to me and i'd never realized it about that but it's about the judgment people are afraid to ask yeah. because they think you know that people are going to be like oh they don't know what they're talking about you know whatever but i suppose from your point of view like you said you've seen it all like yeah. there's nobody really you're going to come on and go like what are you talking about you're you know like that's not going to work or whatever mm -hmm. so you know there's some people who, as you said, they're good at certain things, maybe yeah. not so good at others, and that's where the assistance is required, and you take them on. So it's kind of not being afraid to ask for, for the help or no, the assistance. Not being afraid, but also, as you know, Michael, like we have an open door policy. We're all very approachable. We're all, especially me, we are very parochial in terms of day and PLC. <laughs> um, so I, I, I suppose the organisation wants anybody, any mm -hmm. walk of life, no, um, they could be feel comfortable they contact us if they're uh 17 year old students that that mm -hmm. that you know that wants to contact us absolutely if it's a 65 year old experienced business owner and they're looking for a bit of support i want i suppose we want them to yeah. be able to uh, yeah. contact us so like every stage of business every uh walk of life you're just looking for for them they 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 reach out yeah um and I think we, we have a, a great team at the moment. And I'm not saying that the team, we know everything, but we know maybe who they say and post you to you as well. And yeah. Enterprise Northwest is a social enterprise. So we have a, we, we're, we're a, a business with a real, I suppose, social mandate and social mission. So we run an operation ourselves. We run a business ourselves. We have kind of, we have, uh, staff we have premises we have utilities we have kind of legal stuff that we have to comply with we have finances we have all oh, tax all of those things so we we run an organization as well so mm -hmm. we're able to maybe bring some of that knowledge yeah. as well to those it's not like states. you don't do it it's, we don't do you, it you know, we don't, we're not a we're not a funded organization we don't receive yeah. a penny of uh, government funding so we run on a business model yeah so again if we're able to bring any of that knowledge to our early uh, stage clients then that's what we do yeah. yeah just just touching on that so social enterprises so for perhaps people who aren't aware what is a social enterprise what what is its mandate let's say well a social enterprise is uh an organization that operates on a business model but it's primarily focused on a social mission yeah so uh, we have a really strong social enterprise sector in the city mm -hmm. um and i think that that comes be for me, it comes maybe from a bit from the civil rights as well in terms of that, uh, I suppose, self-start yeah. and that kind of can-do attitude in, in the city. So ourselves as a social enterprise, Nerve Centre social enterprise, you know, the Rathmore Enterprises are a social enterprise. There's many organisations across the city that have operated in a business model, but I suppose they're driven by a social mission. No one owns them. It's not a commercial. Not a commercial. commercial so like any of the profits are regenerated back into the organisation. They have voluntary boards that sit uh, um, on those organizations with relevant skills that are able to guide the organization. Um, 
some like for example i mentioned the nerve center nerve center is about developing the creative sector in numerous uh, uh, ways our social mission is about uh, developing entrepreneurship and economic development across the northwest now in culture land is about developing up the irish language and cultural quarter and i suppose sector in the city so it's organizations that operate on a business model uh but both that are driven by a social mission do you think so there's a lot of talk at the moment about you know kind of capitalism and kind of profiteering and that there's not really enough kind of corporate social responsibility and kind of touches within the social enterprise side so businesses that maybe are run kind of solely for profit yeah and not you know really with other things and then you know whenever you factor on things like climate change and um you know other you know opportunities for use and things like that yeah. do you think businesses in general need to kind of move sort of a bit more towards a not more. solely proof pro- profit and a bit more towards listen you operate in these communities you have to just be a bit more responsible for them i suppose it comes down to the, the, the i suppose the investors or the owners and you know, it's what's their kind of what makes them tick because those, <coughs> those private businesses that operate for example in the northwest in the city you know, those ones that are more in terms of their corporate social responsibility it's driven by the top yeah. It's driven by them, the way that they're they're kind of they want to do uh, more, and it's maybe not about profit maximization, but I think it, it'll probably be, it's a hard sell for them because they just see kind of the, the pound shillings and pence, uh, whereas the social economy sector, they, they as I mentioned before, they sometimes take a punt on something, you no, know, and and it's more yes, it's a balance of the the profit anchor or the I suppose the turnover as well as the social benefits. No, we uh, in our organisation we talk about social impact yeah. and social value. So ours is a balance about kind of our turnover being able to cover our cost and I suppose what we can put on the and the local community in terms of social value and social impact. We have a measurement of probably about seventy thousand pounds worth of company time is put on the the local economy each year, and that's from. Rachel sitting on the board, me sitting on the board, me providing services, no our advice services to organisations and just providing um, consultancy service at no cost. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think they are the organisations that will take the risk on maybe employing somebody you know, uh, that maybe has an experience or qualification. They, they maybe have the personality and the work, th- work ethic, but they may take uh, a punt on them. There was a, a, um, an initiative a few years ago called the Foil Community Works Programme. Mm-hmm. And it was run by an organisation uh, not too far away from here called uh, GSAP, Greater Chantella uh, Area Partnership. And it was to take 200 of the furthest away people from the labour market in the, the Darien Straban and put them on the employment with a, and social enterprises. Right, so okay. the, the, these uh, participants, lots of them had some significant challenges, furthest away from the labour market. So they just weren't all employed. They were furthest away from the labour market. And I think at the end of that program, there was a very, very high percentage of those people that were retained within the organisations. So I think it was around about 50, 60 percent um, that after two years, the organisations, be it a, a nerve centre, be it on Culterland or uh, Rathmore, they kept on the organisation or kept on the, 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 the people. So would the private sector have dealt with 200 people furthest away from the I, I'm not sure. And that's yeah. just an honest answer. Um, but it's driven from the top down and um, maybe that softens whenever you come they maybe locally owned businesses but some of the big firms in the city are maybe kind of IT maybe kind of manufacturing maybe they're they're foreign owners and it's maybe just about sweating taking the <laughs> yeah, uh, sweating the asset as much <laughs> as, as, they, as they can so maybe that softens a bit whenever we get down to the local owner that's maybe just you no know, sees the person rather than maybe what for me is uh, somebody that uh, sits on boards and stuff like that I don't really care about qualifications it's more about the person and I think a lot of people are going that way now it's just as their work ethic there as a personal yeah. time have the good communication skills all those things that uh, I keep drumming on to my sons about you know, all <laughs> those life skills that employers really want you know, people, anybody can have a certificate but it's those life skills that us as an employer 
uh, are really looking for. Yeah. Well, and that's the the thing is that, and it seems to be the bit that's disappearing actually is mm. the, the you know the consistency, the work ethic, the yeah. the drive. You know, there's a lot of this thing about you know kind of just quit. Oh, it's quite hard there. I'm gonna quit. You know, <laughs> and and it's ne- not necessarily that they're and then as an employer, mm. as you say, you're kind of like. I can't if I can't rely on you yes that's yeah. you know that's no good to me so Absolutely. um but so uh, c- so you give us a few examples just um about that but do you think that the social enterprises are going to pay like you know they're kind of going to lead the way in terms of these reforms and kind of say that you know from the environmental side from the the kind of social side and in, in terms of like you're saying the f- maybe the furthest out of the labor market and yeah. stuff like that are they going to have to be the ones that lead the way and then kind of show the benefits and then maybe hopefully it'll spill over into the private companies or what you're, you're probably you're probably right uh last year there was a social value act that was um put in place by um the finance minister and the social value act is uh, an act that uh, had operated in england and wales and it's basically now putting social value and the public contracts mm-hmm. so within a public contract now you have to have a social value there's a score for social value so basically private sector organizations that maybe have delivered those contracts previously are now lo- now, now looking at it and then there's maybe a section they say 20 percent 20 percent or 10 percent scoring for social value at the, they're probably having conversations to say well what is social value now whenever you want it it's like what do you make of it no it's it maybe how many people with maybe that are unemployed maybe going to work in the project maybe um people from ethnic minorities no all kind of uh, minor minority groupings so they have to pay attention it's to like it uh, factor this in and, so and but it's nearly sure. been forced upon them which there's the, the only way they're probably going to kind of uh, uh do it um, so that's a, 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 a good change and it's about just developing the sector. At the moment we have no government, uh, we have no social economy strategy for Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland does and I suppose they're able to kind of align you no know, different initiatives or maybe they align with that. So there is still a bit of work, uh, or sorry, a considerable bit of work. There is support organisations out there that are doing a lot of stuff in terms of trying to grow and develop the sector. We would work alongside them they try and grow and develop a sector in the northwest but there are significant challenges not having a government it does uh, impact upon that um social value is a real Th- these forward. are probably the bits that people don't see as yeah. much about not uh, having a government and it's about there's other stuff that um with we'll, 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 uh, coming out of brexit and reduction of eu funding there will be significant challenges for government bodies there will be significant challenges for local authorities so I suppose all we can do is champion the sector mm-hmm. and try to kind of do as much that is within our remit and try to kind of challenge and I suppose uh, push um, some of these agencies to be able to develop the sector because we see the benefit, like I see the, um, working with some of uh, the social economy clients that we work with, the benefits that it has in local communities. No one, as I said before, I am a bit parochial. So that's something that makes me makes me tick but i want and i'm sure there's many people out there in the study would want to do more as well but do you think that the the government kind of need to look at things a bit more holistically like you're saying that, that there's a small there's that percentage now to do that but you know like if they had a more holistic approach and kind of not just looking at the contract value and going right well that's the cheapest one yeah. so they should win the tender where this one might be kind of slightly maybe not significantly yeah. more expensive but is providing you know maybe yeah bringing in people who are, are far out of reach of the yep. of the employment so do you think they, they could do a bit more and that you know the, because they, they have money to invest you know the stuff that you say and these are, are these are expensive. significant contracts yeah. so like the the, the 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 significant long-term contracts and in, in certain kind of sectors so that is something that we're uh, funny mm-hmm. we're um uh chairing a, a meeting today about community wealth building so community wealth building is about um love and wage uh, it's about procurement practices. It's about community asset transfer and and other things. So again, it's trying to look at holistically. Yeah. No, not just the cheapest. Uh, yeah. Because we see then that you mentioned it before that multiplier effect. Mm-hmm. So if a contract goes, the uh, UK based firm and maybe it's all done maybe online. No, their staff are paid maybe sitting somewhere in England. They spend their money in their local convenience stores. Blah blah blah. No, if the if I'm not saying they can be they can't they're they're ring fenced for yeah. local organisations, but if those local organisations have the capabilities and the capacity to provide those services, 
and they have additionality in terms of social value, then there should be something because it's a. Uh, I just think economic or procurement, especially uh, at a local level, it could be a real economic regenerator for yeah. for 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 the city and for the region. Yeah, and as you say, you know, like sometimes it'll make sense to do it one way, but then others, you, you know, once you factor in all the yes. things, you might actually go, do you know what? This is a much better idea to keep it locally, uh-huh. um, yeah. just from the from the other ones, uh-huh. and you know that business might survive if it gets the contract. It might go, and then you have what yeah. you know, maybe ten, fifteen people out of a job, absolutely, and, and that sort of thing. But, um. We take it back more locally now, so uh, you know, on uh, on away maybe from from the social enterprises, but um, historically, like we mentioned, people go tended to move away. I mean, I'm not really including Belfast now, in but I mean, <laughs> maybe uh, UK and, and maybe yeah. there's quite a while there where everybody seemed to be going to Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think the opportunities are increasing for uh, for people in the northwest over the last few years? I think it is. I think. I- is this a few months back I think dairy especially is very up and coming very up and coming even like you think of like it's coming very touristy again now um, there's you know, been, never been as many tour buses uh, actually close, close. <laughs> um, even eating out now you know it's it, it's a lot more up and coming than it used to be like yeah. we now have like a sushi bar and our, our yeah, yeah. like we never would have that. Funny, Dairy somebody actually asked me. Yeah, yeah. Like, you what know? a sushi bar working there? He's like, no, I don't think so. And there you go, we have one, and it's doing um, well. So, but I think uh, also aesthetically, the city looks a lot different. And me being a a, a former water side man, no, a I former? can a former water side <laughs> man. Um, I see the benefits, and it's I suppose it, it's a considerable time ago. But the Peace Bridge was for me a game changer because mm. the Peace Bridge. Uh, connected the city to uh, Edmonton Square and being from the water side Edmonton was always the barracks and yeah, it was yeah. a contested space mm. yeah. but people I suppose in young people now don't see it as a contested space they just see it as a space where they go to a concert mm-hmm. or they go for a walk <laughs> No, so it's connected it's made the, the city centre bigger I also think um, I suppose we have great like well, it's connected the city to St. Collins Park which is a fantastic green mm-hmm. asset mm-hmm. for the city no, there's other towns and cities that you would go to and they don't have any green space within the city centre. No, So yes, there's significant challenges that will come to the city centre in terms of economically, in terms of businesses. Uh, but I think aesthetically, there's yeah. stuff that yeah. people feel proud. And like when you go a walk in the city centre, the Sainsbury's Walk, as everybody uh, calls yeah, it, yeah. No, or over the Peace Bridge. No, even that, even those greenways, no, again, it's aesthetically, no, you can be connected to somewhere within a 10 minute cycle. No, and it's flat. So I definitely think for young people now, it's more vibrant aesthetically. No, they would they, they feel proud. And sometimes you watch these videos of investment videos of different towns and cities. And yes, they they talk everything everything up. But I think there's definitely opportunities for more that kind of. We talk about young people, but we're talking about those maybe those university uh, leavers. No, we have different academies that are being run uh, collectively with the Northwest Regional College, you know, your Alchemies, your Fun Trues, yeah. your Meta Compliance. You know, there's 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 IT firms that are attractive, maybe those uh, a couple of hundred, maybe eight, 21, the 25, 26 year olds, they relocate this to the city. Uh, it was in um, the bus uh, centre in Belfast recently and I, I seen a billboard about, I think it was maybe a Meta Compliance billboard about returning to the city and was like a clear market employee. I think they had the sal- starting salary up there. They more or less <laughs> try, <laughs> try and get a couple of Queens or, or um, a, a Ulster's graduates. They kind of think, oh, oh, I maybe might go to the Northwest instead of going yeah. back home. Um, so there's definitely a buzz. Like, and I, just some of the initiatives that we've we've been involved in and the one maybe working around the, the ages as well. Like, There's definitely a, a vibe yeah. Um, and I suppose the study deal is a huge, huge uh, undertaking. Who knows what it may bring? No, there is still lots of stuff to be discussed and actually what it will deliver down. But it will definitely deliver an enhanced university. It will definitely deliver an enhanced um, Northwest Region class. But I suppose for me, they we I need to see that the benefits of that in local communities i need to see that filter out across the city and it can't be just about the, those organizations yeah. or maybe other kind of organization where it has to filter down the local communities and 
uh, reduce the unemployment level across Derry and Saman because we are still, oh, there's no getting away from it. Yes, there's lots of opportunities, but we are still at the bottom of all the league tables in terms of uh, unemployment, skills, all of those things. So there's yeah. real opportunities, but there are still challenges that we all have to kind of work together collectively to try and address. Yeah. Yeah. Even the events too for businesses, like there's more and more now as the years go on. Like even the legendary food um yeah. Yeah, events, yeah. and that brings a lot of businesses together. And the more um that these events uh be kind of run, the more businesses get involved. Um, especially a lot of clients from our um kind of places yeah. they get yeah. involved in that. Um, even the clipper too. You know, more kind of picking up on that. That's a really good event. Um, puts Halloween in the town puts us in the map. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they they, yeah. they talk yeah. about like. I talk to the organisation. We would have supported the Northwest uh, Carnival Initiative, who started uh, in partnership with Council, uh, started the Carnival, uh, um, the Halloween Festival. So we're on the map in terms of Halloween. So For sure. Club, club, <laughs> Clipper, we're slowly but surely on the map, and I suppose we, Clipper, there's an investment in Clipper, and we kind of have to weigh up what's the the pros and the, the cons of that there. No, even as Rachel said, the the, the food festival, the jazz festival. No, yeah. so. There's things that put us in the map, and there's things that attract people. They come here and spend their money here and stuff there, and then we're hoping they come back. But as you mentioned, there's lots and lots of tour buses. Um, there's lots and lots of people come on and visit. Yes, we want them to come, but we we want them to stay as well, so yeah. that they're not coming on a bus trip and doing Giants Causeway and then doing the walls or the yeah. city and stuff there, and then go. On. So again, there maybe that's a that's something that the private sector falls in terms of bed spaces, the quality of bed spaces, the type uh, of bed spaces. And ultimately, our daytime economy, our nighttime economy. So it all there's all pieces that have to fit together. They don't always fit together perfectly, yeah. and there is uh, external factors and challenges that they face. But I think, I suppose, in and around some of the organisa- or being involved with some of the organisations, I think if everybody's kind of working on the same footing and kind of looking forward rather than looking sideways or looking backwards, I think collectively we're going to make. Um, we're going to make progress. Yeah. And I mean, yes, sometimes people want it done overnight. But, but sometimes it takes time. It takes yeah. time. It takes yeah. time. Yeah. Everything, yes, people would say maybe it's taking more time. No. But the, these things do take time. No, Fort George might be the same. Like, But there's there's external things that maybe are impacting some of those things that you just can't get around. And yeah. you just have to keep your foot to the floor. And well, Everton's nearly, you know, it's it's getting there. In yeah. terms of, they'll have the hotel and then you the, yeah. the office space over. Yeah. And at, at that office seemed, I thought it was finished, but it seems to have taken a bit longer now. So it's obviously the foot out in the middle. Yeah. I'm far from a builder, so uh, <laughs> I don't know how much work is on that. But, um, but it is really positive. As you say, it's kind of expanded in the city centre yeah. yeah, and it's not really that far between no. kind of you know Guildhall Square to yep. Edmonton mm-hmm. Square so it's it's really beneficial from, from that side uh, you kind of touched on it there but you, you, you optimistic for the city deal and, and the, all the various initiatives that are, that are there um, so Edmonton's redevelopment like you mentioned does that give us uh, like cause for optimism? I'm always I'm always a glass half full person, so okay, cool. um, like, like I would I would would hope so. Uh-huh. No, but there there is lots of these city deals that have been announced by the government. So none of them have really well. They're all still kind of the, the the wheels are in motion and the plans are in motion. So we I don't think we've really seen the benefits of them. Yep. But all we can do is put our best foot forward. Uh, the different collective agencies that are going to deliver upon it. No, um, design it. In partnership with a range of organisations, no community, business, no uh, government, and stuff like that, there, so that it's designed to fit the city and the region. So we're talking there in Straban. So there, it's not set in stone yet, but you would like to think with that level of investment that there will be real opportunities in the future. And I and I know for a fact that there's certain regions across. Uh, the island of Ireland that would be crying out for something like this yeah. and this level of investment. We have a university city. We have a really, really strong uh, FE college operating mm-hmm. we, uh, in the city. So we have lots of stuff that's in place, but it's just maybe taking it forward um, collectively as well. So I would like to think that there would be real positives come out of it and we get that unemployment level um, down. We yeah. get that skills up. Yeah. No, we get people... No, but... The, the, there's so many moving pieces in that uh, Michael so all we can do is put our best foot forward yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it, it it does hopefully needs we need to see I suppose how it translates through. But as you say, there's probably a lot of cities would be glad yeah. of the support. So if we move then about kind of to it towards enterprise northwest. So in ten years time, you look back um, at enterprise northwest and what it's done. Scary, ten it? years to the future, <laughs> you'll be twelve years then. You'll be twenty five. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> But I can say, I suppose, rather, for 15 years, it's flew on. Yeah. It has absolutely uh, flew on. And you know, I suppose, like, uh, even over the weekend, like my, my son, we left him up to university, and you're kind of looking back and saying, oh, do you remember his first day at, at big school? And now you're kind of leaving them the university. So it just time flies. But uh, I would hope in 10 years, like, uh, the organisation is still developing and, and, and growing. Um, like, I still look at other organisations and say, right, I like what they do there, I like the, what they do there, and maybe that we, uh, with the board and with the senior uh, team and stuff like that there, and we, we us all collectively as a team, we, we start to mould kind of designs and aspirations of there. But, like for example, we're just about to open a new uh, box start initiative, yeah. so we're expanding the space uh, down in Skeg. We have other aspirations, maybe to expand our footprint across the city. So that might be something. And again, 10 years time, that might take three or four years. They put in place, they bring to fruition. So I would like to, I suppose, still be in this, or we will be, sorry, we will be still in that space and providing that support to local people because in 10 years time, there'll be still yeah. young people coming through. There'll still be people with ideas and if they're, it's never going away. So it's just maybe kind of collectively working together with all our agencies like uh, that we that we've worked with in the past and continue to work with that I suppose trying to get get the levels up get that their instrument up to the levels that we know it can be because of the people and the fantastic people and yeah. that they have they just you know, get us get it so we're not at the bottom of them the tables get yeah. us up kind of there that we have um, that we've made a difference yeah uh, economically. But as well as socially, yeah. No, maybe that's a long-winded way of doing it. But I still want to hear doing the exact, not the exact same thing, but no, relevant to the time. Yeah. But primarily, we will be here in that entrepreneurship space. Um, but the organisation might look slightly different. It might be. I would hope it would be expanded. Hi, I'm a bit like Brian too. Just I have loads of ideas, so I would just love to through the years put them on the list, no, if if yeah. possible, and as well every business no matter how long we're going we've noticed this too always need a bit of help yeah, yeah and things are changing social media as well as it may be in a digital aid um things are always changing people have to kind of be taught it um with for their business so that's always needed so there'll always be help for somebody and somebody will always need to help yeah. so we're always there so that's it's always kind of needed to put it in place but um, a lot of networking events too. We really love that, and our clients love it having network events. So we would love to do more through the years of those, um, just to bring people together, uh, businesses and that, and even if possible, even just extend it a wee bit wider than kind of our local area, w- yeah. which would be even better. Yeah, I w- I would love to see that social value or social impact that we put on the local economy. I would love that to be double. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and I suppose that might uh, that's we can only you know. Our current team can only do so much, so I would love to expand the team. I would love to provide more um, services to local communities, you no, know, and provide that yeah. because I that that makes me tick in terms of the social value we're able to have uh, locally. I would love to develop something in terms of bursary um, schemes for either local entrepreneurs or, or specific maybe youth or female or whatever it may be, so that again, us as an organisation expanding our sustainability so that we're able to we're able to um have a long-term a bursary scheme and have a long-term significant uh social value strategy yeah um that we can put on the uh, local economy i always have a thing that no matter where what idea you have or if you meet somebody in the bus or if you meet somebody at a football match or if you meet somebody at uh training or, or at uh dance class and somebody or a parent says to you in terms of i have a wee idea that they say, oh, you just need to go down and chat to them and down and skate. Mm-hmm. I don't care if they don't know her name. I don't yeah, care yeah. if they don't u- use her old name. I don't care if they use the wrong address. Mm-hmm. See, so long as somebody knows that, <laughs> gone down and speak to Rachel or Brian or uh, Tori or Sandra or Kaden or Charlie or John or whatever it may be, then that's what 
uh, that's what I, I, I suppose as an organisation yeah. we want that they know where they need to go to yeah. and they'll find their way of how to get there Yeah, and as you say it might not necessarily end up there but you can sign post them to the relevant places so that uh, they need give them that bit of guidance and make exactly, that just yeah. a, bit, a bit of an easier journey for yeah. them um, ok listen that's the, that's the serious question so we'll move on to a few <laughs> f- few more fun questions so don't don't look too worried yeah. um, you can choose to dodge this one if you want because I've asked this of a couple of people and they've all dodged them favourite local business or business person at the moment one each um hmm that's hard I have got a <laughs> local business there's been quite a few that have started recently which you know are, are you know there's there's quite a few which is good to see that there's kind of a few good local businesses at the moment who would, what would you say? I'm going to do a bit of cop out here. And rather, than say, <laughs> rather, than, rather, than, rather than say a person, I'll probably say an organisation, but I could say it of multiple organisations. Sorry, yeah, I should have included that uh, as well. Yeah. So mine's at the minute would probably be uh, Destined. Uh, okay. Because Destined have, oh, I know of where they've come to, and Destined uh, now manage and run the the former uh, Foyle Valley Railway Museum uh, mm-hmm. underneath the Craig Avon Bridge. So they um, manage the, 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 the old railway museum. Their, their uh, participants do tours. They, we supported them. They uh, secure the finance. They buy, build, buy and build the building next to it, Northwest Learning Centre. And, and a, a cycle passed there the other day and there's, there's scaffolding outside it. So they're refurbing the whole outside of it. So a real historic heritage asset. They are doing a lot of things in terms of um, their user groups, but they also have a cafe. Um, they also have a space to hire, beautiful locations. So for mine, it would be Destin, but I could name 10 other my social enterprise clients that I'm working with at the minute, and they're doing absolutely fantastic stuff. But just Destin comes to mind. I didn't know they had a cafe, so that's... Very good. I think I passed all day, and uh, I don't know if that was a cop out. I think that was. I thought it was that's a good pretty one. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was no. I didn't name an individual. I, would, I couldn't. I couldn't name I ju- Sorry, I should have said a, a, uh, an organisation as well. Come well, on, Rachel. There's pressure on you now. <laughs> <laughs> pressure. I have. Oh, I have loads. Like just because again, of a very back day. I've seen them come from working from kind of at home up to kind of level now that they're doing amazing but I do have to say one um, you met her quite recently and she'll not mind me saying her name uh, Lorna from the Glam Lounge yep. just because I've seen her progress and she's got amazing ideas like she just doesn't give herself enough credit No. Um, she had the, a shop in Spencer Road um, her own cosmetic range then a kiosk and within months she's now opening her own shop in the Richmond Centre where she's putting a load of businesses on there so um, I don't think she gives herself enough credit she thinks she's crazy <laughs> she has a bit crazy but so am I but, so but we you need that wee bit <laughs> we need that bit so um, she really is she's inspirational she is yep. um, for, for all kind of female entrepreneurs at the minute um, and she is just a great woman to kind of network and give advice yep. even though she doesn't have the confidence at times so she is one of them, one of the top at the minute even though a lot of work going on with them all I have to do say I, I, I do yeah, mean that I do mean it no, and, and yeah. as you said like it is rewarding because you know you see you see so many yeah. to, to uh, start so it's a bit of an unfair question for you <laughs> but um, right so I'll not put you on the spot in this one three marketing tips um, right so don't you probably know it anyway, yeah. my, my biggest one now I'm a digital lead I do all around her social media but I wouldn't get too focused on followers Okay. Right, so we even Brian knows a wee bit about this. People think, oh, I need to give followers, I need to give followers. Don't because we have clients and one of Brian's in particular too have few followers, but their their business has turned over amazing. But um, you want to keep getting followers just for the sake of followers. They bombard your page, and it's not the type of business that you want. Are they coming through your door? Are they putting bums in seats? Are they yeah. putting uh, cash in your till? You don't know. No, probably not. So don't get too focused on the followers. Um, did you say three? Three. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid that to be judged because people again that are uh, following you and coming through your business are coming through for a reason. So don't 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 have a fear. Just do what you want for your business. And my third would be ask for help. 
free market definitely if you're unsure there's of anything, a lot to it there's a lot it's it, like another job and uh because just from ourselves you know we can act like, right that's, that's okay you know yeah. set up social media big grants and say that is a full-time job, full-time job. on its mm-hmm. own mm-hmm. and you know so i think in terms of what i asked you what people underestimate that was what we yeah. underestimated yeah. hugely but we got there in the end yeah. but as you say you, know, you work through it and you get there next holiday if one money's no object i have my next holiday booked uh i'm gonna add this is another cop out it's not a holiday it's a weekend right so um i'm a big liverpool fan so i have <sighs> me um uh, you have to plan these things you have to plan <laughs> these things get the cheap uh flights get the cheap accommodation and get the tickets nailed down so right. My next holiday is um, a weekend in Liverpool in November. It's what March? That's a good question. I think it's Southampton. Uh, okay. I always pick uh, a lesser match so that they won. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> it's just something to do. Um, so that's my next holiday. I hope they absolutely destroy it. <laughs> um, Rachel. So if, mo- if next holiday, if money's no object, like so, my two top would be New York or the Maldives. But yep. I'm going away now in November. I'm part of the European project as well in our work. That's another thing we, we kind of be involved in different projects. So I'm going away to the south of Spain, Cadiz, in November. So that's a nice week and a trip away too. That's better be work though. Up. Work though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of work. Just don't watch me on Instagram. You pick the south of Spain project to, to be involved in, and, and, in, and Brian in gets. <laughs> She's not asking yeah. any questions that day. There'll be no questions that day. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite film of all time. Shawshank. Pretty Woman. Very good. Very good. Summer or winter? Summer. Summer, definitely. Oh, I get sad syndrome in the dark nights. I, oh, to I be honest, I, like, I'm, I'm yet to see someone who said winter, but mm-hmm. anyway, I'll continue to ask and see. Uh, if you won the lottery, what's your next purchase? Ooh, um, the shoes of your cars or house. <laughs> it would be an ele- <clears throat> high end electric car probably either an electric Porsche <coughs> or Porsche Jeep okay. one of them I had the electric one hmm. um, but I always said if I won the ladder I would try to hate it <laughs> I would try I would rock up my sports car <laughs> no, I, no, I would have to that would, be, that, would be, that, would be, that would be my wife's car probably so I'd, I'd kind of come to work in a banger but uh, I have a thing I always buy lotto tickets when I'm away right so I was on the way back from Belfast on Saturday night I bought a lotto ticket in Apple Green so right. I know the way when they say the lotto winner is from County Down yeah, or yeah. kind of the lotto winner is from Lisburn or Antrim or something that, that might be me it could be so if if I um if I won the lotto, I'm going to try and hate it. You're Let's going to try it. and hate it? Would you, would you tell your kids? Oh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how much they want. Uh, uh, you know, I would probably be... House. House? Well, I, have, I own my own house, but I'd probably put money into the house. Aye. Upgrade it? Aye, upgrade it. Aye. I like cars, I but I couldn't be bothered with electric car plugging it on like no. Oh. That's so bad to say that. Like, so. I know, like <laughs> environment. I want an easy life. <laughs> <laughs> I have a semi. I have a semi electric one, and uh, so it's not that much of a hassle yeah. to be honest. Right. But I don't have like if I run on a battery, it's like right the petrol yeah, starts, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's not really that much of an issue. Um, last question: If you were first minister for a day, what would you do? <laughs> can, can I be deputy first minister currently? But so I would go on the government. If I, if, I, if I was deputy first minister, okay. I would phone Michelle and I would tell her we, uh, we we'll sign the right. deal. We'll sign the deal. So yeah. I just it just it just it just makes life a lot easier for everybody. You yeah. know, in terms of uh, having a government. So uh, no, I wouldn't. I would like to be deputy first minister now and just sign it and go on and make a government. So that would be that would be me. That I'm gonna call that as a cop out. Um, so uh, I'm probably the worst yes, because I know I'm not really great at politics. But anyway, well, it's not really uh, a politics question. It's what would you do to improve the area? I suppose as more. Role. I probably would be dangerous. I would make a lot of changes. Jeez. Like just fire a whole lot of people. Just, I just make changes for the good. I just like, changes that probably never have been even made before. Like I always says, if I was at a joke one night and. 
if I was a uh, mayor, I would do away with the thing around your neck. It's so bad. I would wear a crown. <laughs> just to change it up. That's, do you know what I mean? Just to change it up. I don't think anybody will ever beat that answer. <laughs> no, I don't think I'd either. I'd take it and uh, change it to a crown. Aye, just to change it up. A queen. Queen of the city. <laughs> Not mayor. <laughs> Listen, Brian, Rachel, thank you very much for that. Uh, really, really appreciate thank it. You, so thank you very much for your time, folks. Thanks. All right. Thanks.